Bill. Well, welcome back. This is the second video in my Hovership MHQ2 build. It's been a while because I was waiting for some parts to arrive and they finally arrived today. I'll tell you about them in a minute. So first of all we got the 3D printed parts. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11 parts all together that you got to print. These are the standard arms. It also you can have the choice of an extra long arm. I'll go with those later. The extra long arms allows you to, allow you to use a 6 inch prop. I'm going to go with 5 inch props to start with. So that's it, right there. Um, I love this, this is going to be awesome. 3D printed quadcopter. So let's put all of this off to the side. I'll have a look at a part here. This is the upper of the dirty section. This is the lower of the dirty section. This is where the all the strength really has to be. The arms will fit in there. This is your camera mount. Uh, if you're going to be using a GoPro or whatever, it can mount on there or your Fat Shark. More on that later. And then the top of the clean section. That's the Hover Ship logo right there in the middle. Pretty cool. And then the arms. The standard arms. So what was I waiting for? Well, I was waiting for this. Hmm. Doesn't seem like much. This is the hardware package. I ordered this directly from Hovership.com. You can actually get a few different things from Hovership. You can buy a full kit, which includes the 3D printed parts, the hardware, and all the electronics you need, and it's a full kit. You can just build your entire own MHQ2. Or you can just buy um, the, another kit, which is everything without the 3D printed parts, but it comes with all the hardware, motors, ESCs, a um, NASA 32, a NAS32 flight controller, power distribution board. Or you can just buy this, which is just a hardware kit. Now the reason why I did this, I was having trouble sourcing these. These are some, these are metal. Are they? Yeah, they are. These are the standoffs. And these look like just regular standoffs used on a, on a computer motherboard, actually. Let me try and keep these in focus, sorry. I was having trouble sourcing these 35mm uh, standoffs. Now I could have just made my own on my printer and been done with that, but I decided to go ahead and order this hardware kit from Hovership.com. Hovership being the people in the company that actually designed this MHQ2 and released it. So I decided, you know, I don't mind shooting them a few bucks just because they've gone and built this really cool open source quadcopter. And I'm going to build it, so I didn't mind shooting them a few bucks. It comes with the rubber dampers for connecting the uh, clean and dirty sections and then all your screws and nuts and all your hardware so that's it it's about um, 16 or 17 dollars off of their website not so much let's have a look at the rest of the things that are going in here first of all I've got my X8R receiver this will be used with my Tyrannus Plus transmitter so that's the main receiver for it I've gone ahead for the motors and I bought this box of motors right here. These are the Multistar Elites 2402s, I believe is what they're called. <laughs> um, 2300 kV. Look at these little things, they're just tiny. These come with clockwise and counterclockwise uh, noses on them, so that way they're basically self tightening. Um, which I guess is kind of cool. It doesn't really matter to me. They don't come with mounting hardware though. So I had to dig out a whole bunch of uh, three millimeter screws. I didn't, oh, it turns out I only had 15 and I had to finally get, pull out a silver one for the last one. But those are the motors right there. Multistar Elite 2402s. Little pancake motors. Cool. Look at those. Those are gorgeous. Pull out a uh, arm. So they just screw right in there. And this can come in straight into the center and then you're going to want to zip tie them onto the inside they come built with two millimeter connectors awesome so those are the motors right there little uh, multi-star elites very cool comes as a full kit of four motors don't need anything else except your mounting hardware to power them I have of course gone with the afro ESC's these are the 12 amp EFC's the motors have a max draw according to the specs of 11.5 amps, so these are of course the uh, best ESCs to use. They have 2 millimeter bullet connectors on each end. These are to the motors and these are your powers. These ones will end up being cut off actually, but more on that in a minute. 
So I've got my four Afro 12 amp ESCs to run power. The final bit of kit is this thing right here. This is the HK Mini, or sorry, HK Micro APM Master Set. This is a full APM2 kit, but in micro form. Now, when you purchase, you can, like I said earlier, you can purchase a full build kit from Hovership.com, and that comes with a NAS32 and a power distribution board. That power distribution board, though, is basically just a piece of copper plate that's been separated into little squares and then has some fiberglass molded around it. This one is a little bit different, which I'll show you in a minute. Okay, so starting with the APM2 itself. This comes with all of the cables you need, and this is a really neat little kit. I love this thing. This is so cool. I might buy more of these. There it is. So that is the full flight controller right there. Now I'm already running the HK Ma uh, Master Kit, the regular one, on my Predator 650, which is um, much bigger. <laughs> but this is it. It even has a micro USB kit. This that's on here right now that I've connected is actually the um, OSD wires. I'll, I'll tell you more about them in a minute. Let's just put that down there. So it comes with these. Actually, it comes with more than those. These are your ESC connectors, and you notice there's eight of them. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So you can actually run up to eight motors with this thing. But here's what's really cool. So here's port one, and it's got three wires, black, power ground, and signal, and the rest of these are just signal. The reason why is because you're going to power everything through your power distribution board, and that power distribution board also powers the APM. So you've automatically got a grounded system everywhere. If you don't want to power it directly, you can actually power it from the ESC, which is this one, and again, you're going to have a common ground. So the only thing you actually need for all of your ESCs, except for one, is your signal. Because the ground and power all are common. It's very cool. It also has the servo connector harness right here. It's the same setup. you got all eight connectors. The very first one is power ground and signal because this one will actually be used to power the receiver the rest of these all you need is signal only so they're all just single wire on a three pin connector so you can plug it in directly into your receiver you don't need extra cables and it's minimalistic you're not dealing with a whole bunch of wires that you just don't need for extra weight very cool setup it also has all of the regular analog and digital outputs that the regular APM has and they all right here. So you're not going to power any of your external servos or whatever from the board. They're all going to get power from your power distribution board. So all you need is your signal wires. So it has your regular harness. This one actually plugs right down to this side. And there you have 8, or actually 10, 11? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 12. Yeah, okay, A0 to A12. A0 to A11, rather. Those are all of your outputs. You can run servos, or you can run alarms for battery monitoring. You can, you know, LED kits, whatever you want. It's very cool. So that is the micro APM kit that I'll be using to... Um, where's my... There it is. Uh, this is the flight controller. The, it's full APM, too. runs on the same software and firmware that the regular APM runs on. I wanted to go with this as opposed to the Nays because I'm already running APM on my Predator and I do like it, although I'm going to go up to the Pixhawk soon. Uh, but I do like the APM2. It's very complete and configurable and very cool. So that's the APM2. Now if you were to buy the Hovership kit, it comes with a pre, uh, the power distribution board, which like I said is pretty basic. This kit comes with a really cool power distribution board. So this is your input positive and negative. Each one of these two pads here are your, see how they're set? Those are your power for your ESCs. You're going to solder your ESC connectors directly to this or I mean just for lightness and you don't need a lot of extra distance or length. So these will be soldered directly to this. But what's really cool about this is that it has this. It has a built-in 5 volt regulator or 5.3 volt regulator, I don't remember which it is, as well as a voltmeter um, for battery monitoring. 
This plugs in, you got a nice uh, four pin cable, or, two, or five pin, whatever. And then this powers up your APM too, or powers up the micro board as well through one of these wires, this wire right here. So this allows you to power your APM2, as well, uh, the, the microcontroller, as well as give you full battery monitoring built right into it. So again, it works just like the full APM. That's why I like this one so much better than the NAS32 kit, because it has the full power monitoring and 5 volt uh, regulator already built into it. Very cool. It's a complete kit right there. This also comes with this little bit right here. This is the micro GPS. Look at that bad boy. GPS. Then it has this. This is the micro OSD. Hang on. Let me just show you this. That's the minimum OSD. That's the micro OSD. Runs the same firmware can be managed through the companion app same way and you can do all the same stuff with it but it's microized this is the minimum the minimum doesn't actually come with the heat shrink I put that on there whoops I think I put that on wrong I did nope I put it on right I don't want to distract let's just put that back together so I don't lose it throw that back in the box so that right there is a little minimum OSD and it comes with all the cables you need however oddly enough so these are the output cables. The other cable that was plugged into the APM is the input cable that goes to this and uh, to the telemetry, which I'll show you in a minute. These ones, this goes to your camera, and this goes to the transmitter. So you got your uh, telemetry coming in, and then you got your video signal, and then your signal going out. The problem is, is I've got a Fat Shark camera and transmitter. This doesn't fit the Fat Shark camera. It's too big. The Fat Shark camera actually takes a smaller 3-pin, so I'm going to have to do some fiddling there to make that work. And then this won't actually fit into the transmitter either because this is a lock, and it, the transmitter also has a lock, but it's centered, and these actually don't go centered. It's very annoying. Anyways, I'll show you more on that when I get to this bit of, it, of the build. So I'm going to have to do some fiddling with the cables to make this little bit work, and that's a little bit annoying. Where does this go? Does it go in here? Yeah, it does. Okay, so that's the minimum OSD. And the last thing, get in there, is this. <laughs> so first of all, you've got your 915 megahertz transceiver. This is the same one that comes with the regular HK Pilot Master Kit. Uh, I've already got two of these because I have the other kit. This is going to be for your ground station. Now, I use a my cell phone. You can see another video. I have my cell phone mounted onto the top of the Tyrannus with a 3D printed case. And then this is Velcro to the back of that mount. This is just for the receiver. The onboard system is actually much, much smaller. So that right there is the onboard transceiver. Look at that. It's the same as this thing only microwise. Now you're not going to get the same range as you do as if you were using two of the full-size transceivers, but you don't need the range because this thing you're not really going to be flying this thing, you know, half a kilometer away. <coughs> Excuse me. So that is your telemetry kit right there, and that is the entire HPM2 uh master kit, micro master kit. It's very cool. The last thing I'll show you that'll be in my build. I just want to put all this stuff away. So this is the first time I'm using a tripod and everything like that, so I don't even know if I'm really keeping everything in frame. Uh, props. So I've got six by 50-40 uh, props, 5-inch uh, by 4-inch pitch. I've got 50-45s. And then later on, I've got the 60-40s uh, that I'll be using uh, when I decide to really... The multi-starters are actually rate these ones at the highest torque by far, or, sorry, thrust by far. And they're actually more efficient as well, but whatever. These will be the primary props I'm using, the 5040s. And then I just bought some 5045s just for the heck of it. So that's my build. 
that's everything I'm going to be using in my build. I just don't want to make sure I reckon any of these wires. So the first step is to attach the landing gear and then temporary mount the arms so that you can bolt on the motors and attach the ESCs, solder them to the mounting or to the PD power distribution board, the PDB, and then uh, attach the PDB itself. So those will all be attached on here. Now the P all of the APM kits are your standard 35 millimeter square boards with a 32 and a half meter mounting hole, which is exactly what these are. The NACE 32, the KK, um, and whatever else is out there for those for the micro sizes, are all use the same footprint. So they all this is where the power distribution board goes. The ESCs go here, and they just get velcro or uh, zip tied on the power distribution board. I'm actually going to do something a little bit different for the power distribution board. I'm going to put some. Uh, anti-vibration foam underneath it just for protection and then you'll see how I mount that that's actually going to be pretty cool so if you're wondering uh, how you actually use a different board I'll show you a little trick there um, so that'll be the next video uh, is after I start get all of this stuff attached and um, we'll be back in a minute so that's my MHQ2 build ready to start with the multi-star elites the free sky um, X8R the hardware kit the micro APM and of course, lots and lots of propellers. Lots of propellers. I mean, just lots of propellers. It's pretty cool. Alright, so I'll post this up, and um, I'll see you in a bit. I don't know how far I'm going to get on this tonight, because it's freaking hot out, and it's hot in here. And one of the very first things I have to do is start soldering. <laughs> I really don't know if I actually feel like doing any soldering tonight. But we'll see how far I get in this. Okay, so thanks for watching. I'll be taking this build all the way through uh, to the maiden flight, and I've got a GoPro camera, of course, that you'll see in the other videos, but that'll be mounted on the front of here. Oh, that's actually the other thing I wanted to show you. Uh, almost forgot. Hang on. I just uh, forgot to bring it into the room with me. Sorry about that. Just got to open up my little bag here. These are the motors I'll be using. Um, I bought uh, actually five of them just to make sure I've got enough. Uh, 1800 milliamp, three S's. So that's the, the battery packs for it. They will get strapped on right underneath there. Uh, so that's I think what I'll use these for. Uh, I don't know yet. I'm going to have to see exactly how I want to mount these motors. I might do some reprinting and whatnot. We'll see. But okay, so that wraps it up. Thanks for watching. Bye now.